going on everyone hit pause here with a quick rundown of something cool that I've done here uh, I did paint this dude myself using substance painter I have a speed paint video of that if you're interested in how that came about uh, that video isn't great because it had to be um, doubled in speed from my normal 6x to 12x and the reason was is because um, exactly halfway through the entire process it uh, crashed and became corrupted so I had to start over um, and it, it, that just kinda sucks but that's not the point uh, what I've done here which is pretty cool is if I hit play I can run around and I'm this red guy but if I hit the tab button I get this HSV slider here and I can now change my color to whatever I want uh, let's see desaturate here um, this is this slider is backwards but this actually becomes desaturate uh, and then I can also do the value here darken them up and do whatever color I want there is an issue with it uh, a keen eye will see it already right here um, obviously hue has no effect when the value is zero and um, when the uh, saturation is all the way up it the hue merely um, kind of affects the tone here because this is like a grayscale purple so it, it does become darker even though the value is higher so if you want a one you actually want to pick like if you want white you kind of have to pick like a hue like around here um, to do that but you can still do that and what's cool is if I hit tab and then I can now run around and if I come back all the sliders are still where they were supposed to be and I can continue to adjust as I see fit okay I don't have like roughness or metallic or anything like that in there I just uh, just the HSV you know I'm forcing you to be fully um, you know the 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 tones of everything are I, I'm controlling you know as the artist and now I can you know just come up and be a completely different dude there you go sir so how did we do it it's uh, pretty easy actually and it starts in the material obviously so if we come here this is where I brought in dudes material and these are just the textures that I exported straight from substance painter I've got my albedo or base color I've got my material attributes or my um, RGB which is roughness metallic and uh, ambient occlusion uh, in each channel here and then we have the normal map which goes here now the controls are very simple we run the texture through a hue shift node and that requires you to plug the texture in and then give it a percentage so we have a hue percentage scalar parameter there we use a desaturation node again um, this is the reason why the slider is inverted and the reason for that is because um, we're not doing saturation we're doing desaturation and we could one minus the value and fix it but I, I just didn't bother it didn't really didn't didn't uh, hurt my feelings so and then for value we simply multiply by value because remember if if we want to darken it we just set the value to less than one and it'll darken it uh, we do lerp all of that on top of the original and then we use uh, this green channel here from this texture and this texture is something that the Unreal Engine uh, guys have created already. This does come with the dude uh, in the beginning. Uh, in fact, all of these uh, here, including that, are you will all have these. You won't have these because I made these myself. Um, but the, there is a problem with this. Number one, um, there's no padding on it at all and number two it's actually uh, lower res it's 1024 whereas my material uh, these these are actually 2048 so you can see dimensions right there 2048 so that is actually why when I come over let's see if I come right like right here is a good good way to do it so if I set my value down you can see from here the bleed where the red the underlying red is coming through but if my camera gets closer you'll see that goes away just it starts to peek in right there but up close you know that problem is not there so we have a combination of, of three or maybe four issues going on the first being that the mask uh, isn't great because it's low res and it doesn't have any padding the second is it's gonna go into mip maps which means it's gonna half the resolution as the camera moves away each time uh, it's also got compression and our um, 
our characters' UVs don't exactly have enough uh, padding space there either. So fixing any of those things will pretty much solve that problem. And I could have exported out a very clean mask from Substance Painter for it, but I'm lazy as shit, and we already got one. So uh, when you do this yourself, uh, you're just going to want to go in and make sure that your masks are padded out correctly and that your UVs have enough padding between them to, to handle the, the compression and mip maps. you got to always factor mip maps. They're brutal. Uh, seams will show up on stuff uh, really easily once the textures start dropping resolutions by half each time. Okay, so there's the material um, here. So again, it's nothing. It's completely standard uh, except for the fact that I've inserted these controls up here for the hue, saturation, and value. So we can close that down. Nope, I don't want to do anything. We can close that guy. Then next, uh, we have our guy. So on begin play, uh, we grab the mesh, which is him here, and we create a dynamic material instance, and then we store it as a variable so that we can access it later. Okay, so this gets generated at start. And then I have three custom functions here that are super simple. We just take that material instance, which we created here and or you know we create it up here but we now read it here and we just set the scalar parameter value so each one of these is a custom event so that I can call it from outside and each one of them does have an input so I can feed it the values so we have custom saturation with sat custom value with val and custom colors with hue and the names here need to match identically uh, I don't think caps matters but um, spelling does in fact matter and that's all we have to do on the guy literally. But the next thing that we need to do is in the um, player controller. Um, but before we get to that, I'll show you guys the widget. Okay, so in the designer here for the widget, I have just some text, just simple. But I also have these sliders, which you can find right here. Okay, you can just drag them out. And I just made them a little bit longer and then copied and pasted them and named them okay hue slider sat slider val slider okay I'm not actually doing anything here they are checked to be variables but that actually does come in as default when you drag in a slider a text box does not okay so if I drag a new slider in it will automatically be is variable okay is variable just when you go to the event graph just keeps it here so that you can see it okay and then what we do is once it's down we're looking for in the event called on value changed and that's right here so when you first generate the slider if I come down here you can see it's looking for it there's nothing here so we hit the plus and that will create one for us once you have created one it will change to view here so if we go here to view what we have is when the value changes, I get the owning player pawn, which is this dude, okay, who called it to be opened, and then I cast it, and then I call the function for custom color, and I feed it the value. So the value goes into hue, uh, and then for the re for the other sliders, it's identical except we call the other different custom events. Because remember, I got three: custom color, custom saturation, custom value custom colors, custom saturation, and custom value. So that's all we need to do there. And that works 100%. But what happens is we have to do one more thing, because if we don't, I'll show you what happens. Uh, okay, here we go. So I'm going to adjust my color to be blue, which is going to put that slider about halfway. Okay. Now when I close this, I'm still blue, but if I open it again, my slider got reset. As soon as I touch it, I go back to red and I would have to move it around. So if we want to store the values here, we need to retrieve them. So what I'm doing here is on event construct, which is akin to uh, begin event begin play. So as soon as this gets uh, created, it will call this. We get the owning player's pawn, we cast it, and then we receive the material instance. We get it, we get material instance variable, which again is this guy that we set here and are using here, here, and here. Okay, so we get that, and then what we do is we come off of here and we say get scalar parameter. 
okay we don't want to do the uh, array we want to just do this one here and we can type in whatever we want and it'll just read that value super handy the other super handy thing is you can take one of these over here just hold control to say get and you can say set value and it will set it and when you set it it not only it sets the value but it also moves the slider bar to where we want it to be so after we get all three parameters, okay, Q, desaturation, and value, we then set them one after the other. Hue goes to, to the hue. You can see desaturation comes down to the sat, set value for the saturation slider, and then the value slider takes from here. And that's all we need to do. So every time it gets constructed, it will re receive these values, and then it will set the sliders to where they are supposed to be. So now, when we hit play, and I change to blue, and then I go back, it's still there. Okay? You can see it's it's it remembers where it was. Alright. And, and also I uh, cannot um, in this mode I can't shoot, I can't move, I can't I can't do anything until I hit tab again. Okay, so I set it to tab. So I can't jump or shoot or do anything. As soon as I hit tab, it closes. So we that's how we set up the um, the widget. Okay, so it's pretty simple very very simple in fact and then all we need to do is basically call the menu to open and close and that's all we do here so what we do is we have an input action called open the color menu which I did in fact create here uh, in the inputs I created a new action mapping and set that to tab okay you can just say plus here action remember this is a this is a key that we're hitting this isn't an analog thing so axis mapping is things like the mouse or a controller or stuff like that uh, action mappings are are, are um, basically digital inputs you know uh, on off so what we do is when we hit that we just say okay toggle the color menu and the toggle the color menu we have a variable here called open color menu which is a boolean set to false and we do a simple flip-flop and this is just a this gives us the ability to toggle so if it's false becomes true if it's true becomes false I like to crisscross them to denote this and I, I say this in every video but it is it is a practice that I do and so when we want it to open right here where the widget opens we basically we say create widget and you can just do that here just create W and you get create widget and then you pick your widget from whatever you want and then we we wanna we wanna own this okay we we need to own this because if we don't hook this up then this doesn't work okay so we own it and then we store it Okay, just just like we did with the material instance, we want to store it. We add it to the viewport, which is just another thing. Just type, just right click, type that. Um, then we set the input mode to game and UI. Now there's three of these input modes. There's game and UI. There's game only. Then there's UI only. We use game and UI because we still want to be able to hit the tab button again. And if we do UI only, there's a whole bunch of rigmarole you got to do to start capturing keys, I think. I'm, I'm not sure. I just know that every time I do that, it's a rotten pain in the ass. So what I do is I set it to game and UI, and then I disable input. Okay? So disable input requires the, um, the pawn and the controller. So the pawn is, because remember, we're in the player controller. You got to remember that. Where where you are in your project is so hugely important. You got to remember every time we're in a player controller. So self goes to player controller and then our controlled pawn goes to the target. Okay. When we close it, we remove the widget. Again, that's why I stored it so that I can call that again and remove it. We set the input mode to game only. We hide the cursor. We enable input. That's it. That's all we need to do. And that is it. So I can now come over here and I can say I don't like red. I like um, orange. And pleased to meet you, Mr. Red, sir. Let's shake hands. So this is Hip Pause signing off. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you guys found that fun and entertaining. It's pretty easy to do. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.